In this video, I'm going to talk about the stages of developing visual effects. Altogether, this is called the visual effects pipeline. Now, the pipeline is going to be a little different depending on the game you're working on. And when you think of the word pipeline, basically what we're talking about is the series or steps that need to happen in order for an effect to be completed. So what is the phase that it's in in the pipe? How far along the pipeline has it moved? All of those good things. Okay, so diving into this, there's three main sections to the pipeline that I want to explain today. Number one, we have pre-production. And you can guess what the other two are going to be. There's production after that, and then post-production. So this is also some terminology that you may hear thrown around throughout the entertainment industry. Pipeline, pre-production, post-production, production. They're all terms that are commonly used outside of effects animation as well. So learning them here is going to be helpful because a lot of this information actually translates to other disciplines as well. Now, when we're talking about disciplines, essentially I'm referring to departments. You may have heard of this before if you watched the previous video talking all about departments and how those work and what they are. The term discipline essentially refers to the specific craft or mastery within a department. So I am an effects animator, I am a character animator, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are all different disciplines. So we're just focusing, we're just focusing on the effects discipline today and what that pipeline looks like. So diving into pre-production, there are five stages that I want to outline. Pre-production is critical because this is the first phase, the planning phase, the phase where you answer a lot of the big questions before you move on to the later stages of the pipeline. And you want to make sure that you give enough time and energy into the pre-production, because if you don't, you're going to end up wasting a lot of time later on making big changes or even starting over from scratch. So it's very critical that we focus hard on pre-production and making it go right. Okay, so what is the first stage of pre-production? Well, that's going to come down to the sketch. Now, sketching is something that some of you may be afraid to do. You might not be the greatest artists on the planet, but the good news is you don't have to be a great artist to do really well in the sketch phase. In this stage, we're looking at broad exploration of what this effect might look like. We're going to want to do some really rough sketches and many different variations that are very different from each other. The reason for this is because the sketch phase is just as important as far as drawing as it is discussing. So another way to put that is the reason for that is in the sketch phase, it's just as important to talk about the drawings as it is to create the drawings, right? So you're going to make these sketches and you're going to show them to other members of your team, whether it's your effects lead, your art director, the game designer, the engineer, etc., other people who might be interested and have a vested work connection with what you're working on. And we talked about all those connections previously in some of our videos. And they're going to want to know what is this thing going to look like and how is it going to work in the game? Well, with just a sketch, you can have some great conversations. I saw this many times at Riot Games when I'd first start out on something. I would take just a couple of minutes, do a very simple sketch, show it to my team and get alignment. That means getting them to see and understand and agree with the direction that we're choosing to go in. Okay, so once you've got your sketches, then the drawing skills really start to come into play. And this is in the tie down phase. This is the second phase of pre-production. Now in the tie down phase, you're gonna take your first few sketches that you liked, that the team liked, and you're gonna make them into something a little more tied down, a little more refined. And this is important because some people are not super visual. So remember in that sketch phase, the drawings weren't very good. That means some people on the team are gonna have a hard time imagining in their brain exactly what this is gonna look like. You yourself might have a hard time imagining what this is gonna look like just based on a simple sketch. So in the tie down phase, we give them a little more visual that's a little more refined and completed, still not totally completed, but enough that they can get an idea of what it's all about. At this phase, you might include color. You don't have to include color. It could still be a grayscale or black and white image. That's going to be just fine to kind of explain the clear focal points and the stuff that you want them to be looking at. Okay, so from that, we're going to select our favorite, and then we move on to 
the style target. Now the style target is what we usually think of when we think about concept art. You know, you go on websites like ArtStation or DeviantArt and you see all these beautiful, gorgeous concept art pieces that people have done. And you think to yourself, man, they're so talented. How could I ever be a concept artist? Well, concept art, like many of the other parts of the pipeline on here, or really just like all of the parts of the pipeline that I'm going to talk about today, are things that we teach at VFX Apprentice. So we go clear from the beginning sketch through concept to production and post-production, and that's something you can go learn about. It is a craft in and of itself, and it does take time to learn. So just so you know, sometimes you might be doing your own style target paintings, depending on the skills that you have as an effects artist, and other times a concept artist might help out with this as well. Okay, so you get the style target. It's this beautiful, refined, gorgeous painting of what the effect is supposed to look like in game. And then we're ready to do a call out diagram. Now, again, you don't have to be a master artist for this part. So you might take someone else's artwork and do little call outs on top of it, you know, showing where things are going to be a card or a mesh. We're going to talk more about what these different pieces are later on. But suffice it to say, a call out is important because it's great for planning. How are you going to build this thing? What are the different parts? Think of it like a blueprint. So you're working on top of the still image, the still painting, and you're calling out exactly how it's going to be assembled and what's going to happen there. This is extremely important because this is the first step where something called optimization comes into play. And I'm going to talk more about that in the post-production, but the key thing you need to know about optimization is this is what determines how smoothly the game can run. Because if there's too much stuff going on in the game, the frame rate might go down. So instead of playing at, say, 60 frames per second, it might drop to 30 frames per second or even fewer if you have something that is not optimized playing on the screen. Also, if it's not optimized, the game might take longer to load. It would be a long time waiting to get into it. So these are important things that the engineering team is going to need to know about. And they're going to want to see your blueprint, and they're going to want to ask some questions about, okay, so when you build it this way, how optimized is it going to be? Is that going to be a problem? And from looking at the blueprint, they can estimate and sort of predict roughly if it's going to work or not. Do you have too many particles going on? Are your particles too complex? Do they need to be simplified? This is all a part of optimizing the effect so that it doesn't cause problems for you later. Okay, so after the callout phase, we move on to the block in phase. Now in a block in, this is a really, really fun exercise. And this is something that Hadija teaches in our lessons so beautifully. There's a whole series about creating block-ins. One thing I love about block-ins is it's a great way to get started making effects. You don't have to have all this crazy advanced knowledge. You're just working with very simple shapes. So it's great for learning, but it's also great for pre-production because this is your prototype. This is the thing that you're experimenting with to see is it clear what it is? Is the timing satisfying? Do I like how it's sitting inside of my game? Because this is the first stage of all the stages where you're actually building something inside of the game. And this might be in 2D or in 3D, but the point is that the, the shapes ought to be simple and they ought to have zero color to them. I wanna focus on just grayscale, black to white, to, in order to determine what your focal points are gonna be and how the thing is gonna be timed. We often call this designer art because it's great for game design. You can test an entire game with just block out effects. They don't have to have anything fancy to them. In fact, as you're thinking about it, some games have block out effects in the final version because that's the style of the game is very blocky and simplistic. Okay, so after the block out, or sorry, after the block in, <laughs> we move on to the actual production phase. Now this is where it can really vary based on the project that you're working on, because this is where you're actually building the entire effect. And the techniques to do this are varied widely based on the game engine that you're using, the genre that you're going for, the exact platform that you wanna launch on. All of these things determine what the production phase is gonna look like. But there's some commonalities in here. And essentially, think of it like you're in a kitchen and you have all your ingredients, you need to mix them into a nice recipe. And we'll go more into detail in later videos about exactly what these different component parts are 
These are things that we cover thoroughly inside of our classwork. But for now, just trust me that it's going to be a really fun process assembling your effect, especially if you've done a good pre-production phase and you know what your style target is, you know what's going on with the call out, you know the block in, layering on the ingredients on top of that strong foundation is going to be a lot of fun. So the most important thing that you're going to build is the particle system. Particle systems have a lot of different emitters. And essentially what that means is you got particles flying around all over the place. And within those particles, you got to build all the different parts. You got to build the textures, the meshes, the shaders, all the things that are going to go into it. Now, again, if you're wondering what these things are, we've got you covered in other videos. But this is where everything comes together in production itself. This is where we spend most of our time is in production. It's the most time consuming thing of all that we can do. That's why pre-production is so important to set you up for success here. Okay, so you're making your effects. You're having a lot of fun. The goal here is make it beautiful. In the block-in phase, we were focused more on clarity, on timing and feeling. And now in the actual production phase, we're much more focused on refinement, art style, beauty. Does it fit the thematic, the colors, all the richness of texture and the detail in the shaders? All right, so that's the production phase. That one is a ton of fun. And now also towards the end of production or maybe somewhere in the middle, you're gonna start implementing this thing. Now implementation is critical for effects. Sometimes it's the effects artist that's expected to do their own implementing. Other times it might be a tech artist or a game designer or an engineer that's doing it. This really varies based on the team. But implementation is critical because this is how the actual production that you've created, this actual effect is produced in the game. So you produce the effect and then you produce the actual experience in the game where the player is going to experience this. And this could be a lot of different ways that you're implementing it. Some effects are implemented by just simply being placed in the environment, such as a waterfall or mist that's coming off of the water or fog or fire. If there's like a burning environment that you're walking through, right? So these are more basic types of implementation where it's just sitting there. Other types of implementation might be, well, that thing could catch on fire if somebody puts a torch to it, but the fire doesn't want to always be there. So to implement it, we need to hook it up to gameplay triggers, scripting, all that kind of thing to get it to play at the correct position when the correct tr trigger happens. One of the most common types of implementation is hooking up effects to a spell or a character ability. This is one of my very favorite ways to implement effects when a character is casting something. So they're doing an animation, throwing their arms around the screen, or maybe kicking or jumping or landing really strong or something like that. And we add effects to this that makes the character animation more enhanced. It shows you where the spell is going. It shows you what's happening at the destination. This is all a part of implementation of getting the effect to properly play with the right triggers, the right animation, the right location. All right, so once your effects are implemented, you can start testing for optimization. Optimization is critical. And we mentioned this earlier in the pre-production phase. With optimization, it's all about what's your frame rate and what's your load time. We want to understand, is this thing actually working efficiently? It's all about sustainability because Maybe it's great to just have one effect on the screen, but what happens when there's 200 of it on the screen? Can the game actually handle that? And there's a lot of different ways to approach optimization. There's different things that you can work with to make an effect more optimized. One of them is your texture size. So sometimes we like to paint on these giant canvases, make these awesome textures, but then it's shown in the game at just a tiny little frame. Well, that's not needed. To make that optimized, we would wanna make the texture match the size that we see it on the frame. Or other times we might have a very complex particle system or complex material or shader that has a lot of different math going on inside of it, a lot of computations and other things happening that it just doesn't need that many. And we can simplify these things down to make them more optimized as well. Again, if I'm going into too much detail and there's a lot of jargon happening here, don't sweat it. These are all things that will be covered in more detail in other videos. Suffice it to say, optimization is where art and tech meet up. 
to have a beautiful baby, which is an optimized, wonderful experience for the player. All right, so optimization is a key part of post-production. Also, things that are going to happen in post-production are things like bug fixing. So remember those wonderful quality assurance people that we talked about? They're going to be sending you bugs because you're going to have your effect implemented in the game. And it's going to fire in weird ways or at weird times that it's not supposed to. Or maybe it doesn't work at all in some circumstances. These are all bugs that you're going to need to fix in post-production, along with responding to the feedback to optimize it, make it work better, and that's going to come from the engineering department and the tech art department. Okay, so in pre-production, we have the concept phase where we're doing everything from sketching to style targets to blocking in your effect. In production phase, we've got the actual creation of it where we're going to spend the most of our time building the thing. And then in the post-production phase, we've got optimization and bug fixing. After that, you've completed your effect. Congratulations, you now know the visual effects pipeline and how it goes from beginning to end. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.